Yetis, terrifying creatures that haunt the frozen north. Their claws and fangs are vicious. They can smell you out of any hidey hole. And because their fur is white and blends with the snow, these guys are ready now for battle. Right? Wrong, because it's nighttime. These furry creatures present the perfect opportunity to practice illuminating something from a distant light source. Start by giving them a good black undercoat. Both of them. The red and yellow are here to show that in the future, these creatures may be illuminated by a lantern held by a character. But for now, the blue, green, and black will suffice for shining moonlight on their fur. As with all of my miniatures, I hope that there are many opportunities to use these two, but I plan to have them meet this particular halfling carrying a lantern, and so I use him to figure out what angle will be best for the lamplight to shine, and therefore what angle it will be best to paint the moonlight so that it complements that lantern light. Because I have two of the beasts, I want one facing toward the moon and one away so that there's some more variety to my scene. Each progressive layer of paint after the first black undercoat, it has more blue and green in it. I use blue and green because these are colors that we associate with nighttime scenes. These yetis are perfect for practicing this kind of illumination because they have so many different planes to work with. The angles of every riffle of fur are different, so there are lots of times you can make a decision and figure out what is the best way to show distant illumination. There are two factors that determine how illuminated something will be, and those are distance and angle of incidence. For an object that's close by, like a torch or lantern, both of these are really important. But for an object that's very distant, the fractional change in distance is not very great. So the moon will not have a very different effect based on whether I'm painting the Yeti's head or the Yeti's foot. That makes this kind of illumination easier. The first thing to figure out is what parts of the model are in shadow. Those parts will remain black. Any part that is not in shadow will have a brightness that's determined by how closely it faces the object illuminating it, in this case the moon. I imagine the moon shining from not quite the zenith, so it's shining slightly to the face side of the yeti with the skull on its shoulder and slightly to the rear of the other yeti the brightest portions of each fold of fur or flesh that is facing slightly up and back or up and forward depending on the yeti will be the brightest. Because these yetis are white and because they have so many different angles on their bodies, they are a perfect instrument for learning how to paint this style. They will also be perfect when I start illuminating them with a lantern. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your valor.